Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is finally Friday, January 24th, 2020. Thanks for tuning in again to KSO Today, free daily broadcast brought to you by K-State Online. I tell you guys what, until I switch these over to Flando Fridays, which I cannot wait to do, I think they'll be a lot of fun to listen to. I want Fridays to be a little more fun, a little bit different than the Monday through Thursday shows. So I just threw up over some questions on the message board this morning. I didn't give you all much time to share questions, so I appreciate your responses, what you did. I'm just going to run through and answer them. I'm going to try to answer them quickly, which is an opportunity, aka a challenge for me. I like to ramble, so I'm going to try to be direct and fast with the questions because this is a quick podcast. Before I get into the questions from the foundation on K-State Online, I do want to thank our sponsors, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Also, a quick mention to Tallgrass Tap House. We were there last night for the KSO show, the regular one. Uh, great work by Flanders on that. It's up on the side if you want to listen to it. Appreciate all those sponsors. But Friday is about answering questions for me now. I've got about nine minutes left to do so. Let's start into it. Brady P08 asks me if a scrum breaks out in the KSO office, who would be the DeSosa and try to use a foreign object as a weapon? I responded in this thread asking if I could, you know, plead the fifth because I'm probably, not probably, I am the most emotional of all of us and would overreact the fastest, so that would most likely be me. Uh, B Owner Jams sends in five. I originally asked posters to do five questions, and I just pick one poster and do all five. Um, I got a number of responses, so I'm just going to try to do all of them. But in the future, I may just narrow it down to just five and call it a Fast Five or Furious Five or some sort of alliteration, because that's all I can ever come up with when I try to create a clever title. Who would want to fight, our basketball team or KU? Oh, boy. Um... I kind of think Kansas is, uh, I saw, you know, I saw a precursor to that fight. I saw one team that was willing to to grab a stool and stomp people on the ground. I don't know if K-State's going to go to that level, Um, so I guess KU. Um, How much, that's a cursed word, how much butt or a team kick next year to the KU game after watching the fight this week? Probably a lot, and I do think they probably care. I think Chris Kleiman's the kind of guy who will make the programs, you know, remember each other and care about each other. The programs interact more than they used to football and basketball. It's not going to impact it. It's not like they're going to talk about it in the locker room before they play KU. I know it's a tongue-in-cheek question, but they probably don't love it. Um, And I imagine it's going to be a blowout either way when they play football again. What is the best stadium available object to assault someone with in a fight? I mean, a stool is great. I don't know what you can do better, better than that off the top of my head. There's not a lot of great objects. I mean, I'm trying to think about press row. There's nothing real fun down there to use. I think a stool's as good as it gets, so good to him. If a brawl broke out between sports media during a game, which media entity would win? I mean, I'm incredibly biased, but I think us. I mean, especially if we're all there. I mean, you got me, we got Nelson, we got Fan, we got Jimmy, who is Fan. I do that every time with him. Um, we have DY, we have Logan, we have Nats. I mean, that's, I don't know, six or seven people. I consider all of them relatively tough and in fighting shape. So, I mean, yeah, probably, probably us. If the Big 12 has now ruled curb stomping legal, will we do it more? Um, You got to wonder, you know, if it's an option you have at your disposal, why not? That's a joke, as was the question. So, Top Ramen, um, walk through the rest of the basketball schedule and predict the games one by one. I will do that. And what's the final record? But I'm going to come back to that because I need to pull it up. Number two, when do you expect the next basketball recruit to commit? And who do you expect it to be? I'm going to dodge that as hard as I can. I mean... I want this podcast to help sell our site, but I don't want to start giving away recruiting information on it because then I don't sell our site. But I would be looking, you know, at the names we've talked about, Donovan Williams, Carlton Lingard, uh, those types are probably most likely. What's your best recruiting story you've heard since taking over KSO? No names necessary, just funniest, weirdest situation. I mean, man, again, that's that's probably, these are great questions. I'm not trying to be annoying. That's probably like a lengthy Derek Young podcast question. I don't have one that just comes to mind right off the top of my head. I think Kai Thomas has been interesting the last year. This isn't a great story, but I mean, I was sitting in the post-game press conference at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City when D.Y. texted me, hey, Kai Thomas just committed to Minnesota. And I thought, boy, this is a heck of a time. Just lost to Iowa State. People are mad about that. Now, Kai Thomas somewhere I never thought would happen. There are way better stories, but that's what comes to mind when I read that question 
quickly. Number four from Top Ramen, which Chris is coaching at K-State longer, Chris Lowry or Chris Kleiman? I mean, I love them both. I think they both do a fantastic job. I think my answer would be Chris Kleiman. I mean, he's only one year into it. I believe he's younger than Chris Lowry. Uh, It's just a successful uh, guy in one year. I think he's the safer pick of the two. I think both could be at K-State a very long time. When do we get the first 2021 commit for basketball or 2022 commit for football? Again, I'll probably leave those for DY. These are great, great, man, I got a problem speaking today. Great questions. Top Ramen, please don't be discouraged because I didn't answer a couple of them. Um, But yeah, I'm going to leave the recruiting stuff for DY specifically. I am going to run through the schedule real quick. This is fast. Please don't hold me to this, everybody. I'm just doing this as I look at a screen and going from there. So K-State's got a game right now against Alabama coming up. The Wildcats are 8-10 and 10 overall. I think K-State will lose at Alabama. That makes K-State 8-11. and 11. Let's keep going here. I think K-State beats Oklahoma at home. That's 9-11. and 11. I think they lose at West Virginia 9-12. and 12. I think they lose to Baylor at home 9-13. and 13. I think they lose at Iowa State. That is 10 and, uh, 9 and 14. I think they beat Oklahoma State at home. I said 9 and 14, right? So that's 10 and 14. I think they beat TCU on the road. That's 11 and 14. I think they lose at Texas Tech, 11 and 15. I think they beat Texas at home. That's 12 and 15. I think they lose at Baylor, 12 and 16. I think they lose at they get to Kansas at home. That's 12 and 17. I think they went to Oklahoma State. That's 12 and 18. I think they beat Iowa State at home. That's 13 and 18. I think that's too many games. So I must have messed up. I think they had 30. So I'm guessing around 13 and 17 is where I've got them right now. Um, I like the question. I like doing it. I hope nobody holds me to that because that was just looking at the schedule and picking a winner with no real thought put into it. But as I look at home and away, quality opponents, something like that. So maybe 12, 13, 14 wins is where we're at. These are from JJM22. Impact of Sean Snyder leaving KSU for special teams to impact in-house both positive and negative. Uh, I think Sean Snyder has gotten a pretty bad rap, you know, from fans, media, etc. Um, I think he gave a lot to K-State and did a very, very good job at K-State. I think he deserves probably even more credit for some of the special team success than he gets, which is crazy because he was a special teams coordinator. Probably shouldn't have to fight super hard for credit. Um, other people impacted that uh, over the time he was there, and especially last year with a guy like Stanton Weber. And I don't think, if I'm being honest, there's going to be a significant drop-off because I think he's that system has been imparted for so long. I think they executed it last year when he wasn't in as active of a coaching role. I think they'll be okay. Um, uh, as far as impact, in-house positive, negative, you know, I, I think I think it's probably best for everybody. You know, I think Sean Snyder actually had a pretty good relationship with Chris Kleiman and that staff. I think there was mutual respect and understanding and, and um you know, there was some like, you know, some liking each other. They weren't at each other's throats or anything like that. Um, but I think it's probably ideal for everybody. Um, wish him the best for sure. And I think K-State will do okay moving on. Have you heard of the basketball team has been after the Rumble? Not really. I mean, we haven't had a media availability. We've had some off-the-record chatter and that kind of stuff. But I don't think anything unique. I don't think the question is, have they come together more as a team? Is Bruce running them, et cetera? I don't think there's anything truly unique that has come from it or has really changed the team. Number three, name a player that creates the most buzz, in your opinion, during spring ball. One on offense and one on defense. On offense, I'm going to go with Joe Irvin. Um, I know Jacardier Wright, rightfully so, got a lot of hype and buzz towards the end of the season. He played pretty darn well, better than I even probably thought he could as a true freshman. So he's going to get a lot too. But I think Joe Irvin will be the best back on the team next year. So I think he'll have a big spring on defense. Maybe Jonathan Alexander. You know, I mean, it's not a new name, but I think him stepping into a full-time safety role, I think he's more athletically gifted, you know, than maybe some of the people taking snaps there in the past. That's not a, a slide. A, that's not a backhanded slide at Denzel Goolsby or Wayne Jones from this past year. I think he's a bigger, faster, more physical player. It is what it is. So I'm excited to see what he does back there full-time. Any rumblings of the football staff adding more help? Uh, that's number four from him. Yes, but nothing specific. I will say, I think some of the money um, money's getting a little bit better for K-State. A couple of different things, whether it's coaching changes, scheduling changes, there's going to be some money available to add help. I expect it to happen. If you could bring back one player from the Bruce era to add to this basketball team, who would it be and why? Rodney Magruder comes to mind to me. Um, I mean, him and Barry Brown are obvious choices. You're looking for a leader. I don't want to argue who's better between Magruder and Brown. Um, they both did great things. I guess I think Magruder, um, I would like a more of a true, you know, a little bit more size, a little bit more of a true wing. The guy's obviously been in the NBA for quite a while, which makes me think he's probably got higher upside as a player than Barry Brown did. Love Barry Brown. He did great things. Give me Rodney Magruder. And, of course, I feel a little silly for not saying Dean Wade when you need post help, but I think they need leadership, and I want Rodney Magruder. Let's see what else we got here from Aggie Villian. How much do you make before taxes? It's roughly $4 million, I believe. What does Flando smell like? I would say cinnamon. 
what is the sexiest animal on the planet? Is Flando an animal? Is my response to that. If you had to, dwar- if you had to be a dwarf or an elf, which would you be? I mean, I don't want to offend anybody. My mindset goes to elf. Um, people like elves. You got cool ears. You're associated with the holidays. I think there's a lot to win with being an elf there. How much would you pay? How much would you pay a hacker to not release your browser history? Well, I don't have any money. I mean, so I, it's a great question. Um, I did tell you to make millions of dollars. So, I mean, let's just plead the fifth on that because it's probably a disaster. Bear Jones 5. I'm going to get through these here. In your opinion, is Bruce Ball fun to watch? Even though they're good. Yes. Uh, I've never been critical of the style of play. Um, I, I value defense. I value playing hard. I value all that kind of stuff. I value offense too. I'm not saying I don't, but I've never considered them boring to watch. Not how I feel. Do you believe our O-line will be more athletically gifted than this year? And if so, what advantage does the seniors provide in a new system for us more athletically gifted players? I think they'll be more athletically gifted on the offensive line. I do. Now, what advantage? I mean, you know, experience means so much. Now, like you note, in a system, there wasn't a lot of experience in either way. Maybe it's taken down a little bit. Um, I don't think the line has to be significantly worse. Is the best way I can answer this. It may be similar. I'm sure there'll be struggles early. But I think the fact that the seniors themselves had experience playing college football for sure, but not a lot in this system, may have taken some of the value from that and put it back into having guys that are perhaps a little bigger, stronger, faster, longer, etc. What is the title of the first person hired up with the free money from Sean's likely departure. Uh, I think I would just guess analyst recruiting help. I can't, I can't guess a specific title, but one of those two things. Do you believe anyone's responsible for anyone else's actions? In other words, does it matter who started it or who is at fault or should each person be individually responsible for how they responded to each event and the argument is senseless? It's probably senseless. Um, I think when you're evaluating things and deciding punishments and people's actions, you do have to look at some circumstances where you're protecting somebody were you retaliating to being attacked? I mean, there are some things that I think do impact how you're going to act. But I think in general, you know, if you're not physically being abused or physically protecting somebody, you probably should just take care of your own actions and be a bigger man and not respond to things. KSU fellas, how much can Natalie Max now? Is she be one of the people who become distorted with all our extraneous muscle? Absolutely, she already is. I mean, I don't know if I want to tell you her Max on the air. Her bench is probably one of her weakest lists. She's uniquely strong a lot of other places. Her bench, um, not as much as you would like. Uh, we're getting her to do her body weight. That's what we're looking for. What I consider the mood of the basketball team right now, I think fine. But again, we haven't had an availability since the since the fight. Haven't had any official talks, you know, with staff or that kind of stuff. I think it's okay though. I think they're, they're I think they're fine in general. A few more here. I have five more total. I'm going to answer from KSU. Have three of them. What's up with Mike McGurl? Concussion is what is up with him. It's just taking time to recover from. I would expect he might play as soon as this weekend. Do you think Antonio Antonio Gordon's suspension is fair? Three games, given that curb stomping McCormick, the words used here, got two. In that sense, no. I think if David McCormick did what I think he did, um, which I think he stomped a down player, I don't have video that shows his foot contacting somebody, so maybe that's the cop-out you're getting away from. Without proof of that or being confident of that, I can understand giving Gordon more. I thought Gordon... Should have perhaps been suspended similarly to James Love. I would have even theirs up a little bit. Maybe not eight and three, more like five and four, something like that. But the question says relative to David McCormick, no, I don't think, I think it was too much. I don't think it was fair unless you are accepting the fact you can't prove McCormick stomped on a player. Or if that's the argument from the Big 12, then I guess I get it. Lots of optimism coming off the WVU win. That's three from KSU. Is that, is the real K State team closer to what they did against WVU or KU? Oh, um, probably KU. I mean, I think, I think K state's more likely a team that's going to lose by 20 to maybe the best team in college basketball on the road than beat one of the best teams in the country at home by 20. I think you could say that for about 95% of the teams in the country though. So I'm copping out some, they're more the team that lost to KU than beat West Virginia. But I think that West Virginia team does exist. Meaning the team that beats West Virginia is still part of that K state team. Two more questions. I'm going to answer them from Jay Compton 10, and I'm going to close this out. If you could choose one other school to be a fan of, cover, who would it be? This is a corny, cliche answer, and I'm sorry to be that guy, but Texas, not a fan of the Longhorns. I think Austin's a great time, and just the financial possibilities of covering that team, you know, factors into it too. So it'd be fun to live down there. I think you could make a lot of money doing it, and they're typically uh, at least competitive in the major sports. So I'd go with them, but I'm not going to be making that change. If I could choose one person, to be K-State's minister of, cult- minister of culture does not have to be a K-State grad. Who do you pick? I will take Mason both. Um, 
He has yet to graduate, but he will soon, if I remember it correctly. Even though I said it doesn't matter, give me Mason Voth from K-Man. He should represent us. That's all I have on today's KSO today. Sorry for going a little bit long, but I wanted to answer all the questions. Next time I do this, I'll do a better job of limiting, limiting them down and keeping it to 10 minutes. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back soon to talk K-State and Alabama and the results from Tuscaloosa.